Okay, so let's start today's lecture. Uh, last time we were looking at a two-body problem where we had two particles of mass m1 and m2, which were interacting via a central force. Okay, which we said is given by a potential energy function u of r. Okay, so m1 and m2 interacting. Where potential energy u of r, okay, and the fact that it depends only on the separation distance, the magnitude of the separation uh, makes it the central a central force. Okay, and then we saw that we could reduce this two-body problem to a one-body problem. Okay, so we reduced to one-body problem. And we wrote down the Lagrangian as um, L equals half mu, where mu is the reduced mass of the system. Okay, R vector dot square minus U of the potential er energy which you had uh, originally in the problem. Okay, then we imposed. Um, conservation of momentum uh, angular momentum okay and by using uh, only the fact that conservation of l implies two things first that the direction of l is going to be fixed it is not going to change and second that the magnitude is not going to change so using only uh, the first thing that the direction does not change we could say that the motion happens in a plane okay the motion will be planar this followed only from the direction then when we imposed or we, we could utilize um, the constancy of the magnitude of L in writing down the following. Okay, that's the angular momentum which will be constant. Okay, and then we could also show that for a central force field, the Kepler's second law holds true. Okay, and then, um, yeah. Okay, let's proceed from here. I think we, let me see here. Yeah, it's here. It's already, we have talked, so I can just write down. So now let's continue with today's um, uh, next steps. Now, because the motion is happening in a plane, which I have established based on the conservation of angular momentum, I can write down I can um, write down the Lagrangian of the system to be the following. So I have L. Now this half mu r dot square, this r is because it is uh, going to be in a plane. I can write this as half mu i am writing in now uh, polar coordinates r dot square where r is the radial coordinate and then i should have a term coming from the theta coordinate which is half mu r square theta dot square and then you have the potential energy term now from here we can immediately write down the uh, equations of motion so let's write down equation of motion for the r coordinate. Okay, so we have to calculate d over dt, del l over del r dot, 
minus del L over del R and this will be 0. So if you calculate these, you will find the following. So you get uh, del L over del R dot will give you a mu R dot. It gives a factor of 2 which cancels here. Okay, and when you take a D over DT, it gives you mu R double dot. Then you have del L over del R and both these two terms have R dependence. So from here you will get, so you have a minus which brings a minus here. R because it's square it gives a 2, 2 cancels. You have mu R theta dot square. Okay, then the minus sign will cancel this minus sign and you'll get a derivative of u. Okay, I can write du over dr instead of partial derivative as well because u depends only on r. So, there is no distinction between a partial derivative and a, to and a uh, total derivative here. Anyway, so um, now we can substitute what we had for theta this equation okay in here and obtain the following so we substitute and we get mu r double dot minus l square over mu r cube plus delta u over delta r equal to 0 Okay, so I have removed the theta dot from this equation of motion and now you see this is purely a one dimensional equation of motions. This is a equation of motion of a system with one degree of freedom and that is only r. Okay, the real system is uh, still um, moving in a plane so it is described by theta but if you look at the r coordinate it, it is like a one dimensional system. Okay, and if you have one, we have already talked about one dimensional systems and how to solve them in, in general. So we can repeat the same steps and if you recall, it's um, easier to start with the first integral which gives you the energy. Okay, and from there you can make several observations and that is what I'm going to do now. Okay, and this is exactly what we did uh, when we were talking about um, one dimensional systems. Okay, so let's use conservation of energy. Okay, and what the conservation of energy says, it is that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is equal to the total energy. And the kinetic energy here is half mu r dot square but now I want to write it using the radial and polar coordinates and I also want to use this thing this fact so I can um, write half mu r dot square okay plus this this piece see this entire thing is the kinetic energy right so that thing and I substitute for theta dot to be this piece okay so I get half mu r dot square and um, maybe I should write half mu r square theta dot square plus u of r is the total energy and this is a constant as I have repeatedly said that this is determined by the initial conditions. Now this piece is equal to half L square over mu R square, this term. So with that I can write the following. I can write my uh, equation of energy conservation in the following manner. So I write half mu r dot square plus 
half L square over mu R square plus U of R is equal to the total energy. Again, as you, sorry, it should be dot square. This is the centrifugal term here. Now I will um, define these two, this sum, to be U effective. Okay, uh, I call it the effective potential. Okay, so we have, you understand, right, why I call it U effective because effectively the potential in now is the sum of these two and not just U. If you look at it from the point of view of the coordinate R, okay, that's why I give it a name U effective. And um, good, so we know what we should do to analyze this problem. We remember last time when we were talk talking about a one dimensional system, we plotted u of r now in case of u of r we have u effective of r and here you have r and in general your potential could be anything like this that's the most general thing that can happen it could have some minimum somewhere somewhere a maximum and it could keep decreasing and go to i mean go to zero as it goes to infinity it could keep increasing somewhere in some region okay so these are the most general features that can be present in the u effective of r and we can now immediately see what are the possibilities that can happen one is that your system is somewhere here okay meaning your energy of your system is such that your particle mu is here okay in the one dimensional picture which we have which would mean that the radius the the radius or the separation of this particle mu from the origin remains fixed so the particle always stays here okay which would mean that the 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 particle is going to move in a circular path right see the theta is still going to change with time our theta dot was not zero it was a let's go back here so you ha you you had a non zero theta dot so theta is going to change with time so the particle is moving in plane with theta changing but its radius never changes which means it's going to move in a circle okay so that's one possibility that can happen then what you can have is that you start your particle somewhere here and it comes let's say the particle has energy equal to this value if your particle has energy this much then if it has started from this direction it, it is coming it will hit the turning point and return back and it will go to infinity and would never return again okay that's one other possibility if the energy of the system is somewhere here you know what will happen it will keep oscillating back and forth in here and this oscillation is in the r okay but while r is shuttling back and forth between uh, these in this region the theta is still changing okay so your particle is um, moving in plane with theta uh, uh, changing and the radius is also changing with time okay so this is another possibility that can happen so let me write down one possibility is that R remains fixed which would mean that we the mu is in a circular orbit is in a circular path okay or the R may oscillate back and forth but 
but this does not mean that particle is moving in a line it just means that in the r direction it is um, its r value is increasing and decreasing with time but at the same time it is also uh, moving in the theta direction okay so it's not just an oscillation in one dimension that's not the case and third is r may uh, keep increasing with time may keep increasing with time after it has hit a turning point which was the case here for this one okay and um this is what in general will happen now in order that uh, we say more we need to know the form of the potential okay and then we can uh, analyze the the motion in more detail so we are immediately um, faced with asking what are the different central potentials that are possible well it's and there is an infinity of potentials that we can write but some of them are fairly um simple and common so you could have a central potential which looks like half k r square now this is your hooke's law which holds true for um small displacements in general but let's say i say that this holds true for all r okay clearly it's an unphysical situation because the as r is increasing the potential energy will become infinite okay it will have infinite energy so it's not a physical situation but as far as mathematical function is concerned this is good so this is our hooke's law okay um and this is spherically symmetric potential now so it's a spherical spherically symmetric oscillator then you can think of inverse square laws so where the forces are decreasing as 1 over r square which means that the potential is decreasing as 1 over r okay this will correspond to for example um gravitational potential or coulomb potential then you may think that okay instead of having an r here i can think of a higher power of r below okay and you may ask what happens in those cases another i'm just listing down a few examples so that we keep in mind that there are several different central potentials that can be imagined so you can have a k over r which is same as the inverse square law but the inverse square law you see this uh, force dies off very slowly so it can be felt at very long distances but let's say for some reason i want to have a force which for small distances is more like inverse square law but as the distance increases it dies off uh, very fast so you can supply a um uh exponential damping here like this where a will have the dimension of r okay and you will see that uh, uh, this cuts off the force very fast so what you can do is you can compare this force with that force okay and ask how much smaller this one is if you go to let's say r equal to 10 times a see a is a length scale in this problem right so let's say you are 10 times uh, at a distant times 10 times a then you compare how much smaller this potential is compared to this this will uh, give you a quick idea of why we say that this potential um, uh, cuts off very fast as you go away from a uh, uh, at a larger distance okay so these are some of the examples of potential that are 
possible and you can construct any combination of these and several others you can create maximum and minimum uh, you can create a central potential which has maximum and maximum and minimum also so there are lots of possibilities okay so let's next um, okay that's fine now before i start discussing one of these potentials which will be the inverse square law basically i want to talk a little bit about how we prepare the system okay i mean if if it is in your hands um, so or equi equivalently the initial conditions so either you prepare or it got prepared either way you have some set of initial conditions okay so let's say we are um looking at this one body problem to which we have reduced our two body problem okay and i want to um, uh, pr uh, have my system to have a total energy e some number which i choose okay so the situation is this we have a plane in which the particle will be moving and clearly i have chosen a plane which means that my angular momentum will be in this direction some l i have not chosen the l yet but i have i know that this will uh, the direction i have chosen okay and let's say this is the origin o oh, where r is equal to 0 and let's say i want to start here okay some point r let's call it r not okay and i want my system to have a total energy e Now, if it is here, it will have some potential energy, u of r zero, right? Now, if I um, want to have this number e as the total energy of the system, and I am saying that I am going to start my particle here, it already has a to uh, potential energy u of r zero. okay then this is this difference gives you gives me half mu r dot square okay so i pay attention i have written a r vector not just r dot okay and this at r0 okay so which means that i know or i can calculate from here with what velocity i should fire the particle at r0 okay so if i uh, cal um, calculate this find the number the velocity from this then i should fire my particle okay with the calculated amount of velocity if i do so then my system is going to have the total energy e which i wanted but i have uh, but i have freedom in choosing the direction in which i fire the particle so i could choose to fire it towards the origin right if i do so the energy is still e but the angular momentum will be zero or i may choose to fire it okay uh, by giving it a small angle or i may choose to fire perpendicular to this radial uh, direction and in that case i will have the maximum angular momentum that is possible with that velocity right so depending on in which direction you are going to fire you will get whatever value of angular momentum um, uh, consistent with that so in that manner you can prepare your system to have whatever value e you want and whatever angular momentum uh, you want and anyway by choosing this plane in which you are firing you have already uh, decided on the direction of 
the angular momentum. Okay, so given uh, E, several possibilities are there for the magnitude of L, depending on at what angle you are firing it. Okay, that's good. Now, let me just write it. Depends on the angle at which you fire. Fire the particle mu. Okay, this is fine. Now you may ask um, if I choose some value of the angular momentum that I want for my system, okay, so I want it to have some angular momentum L, what is the minimum energy or maximum energy that is allowed for this system? Okay, so we ask if we want uh, angular momentum to have value L, what are the minimum, what is the minimum energy or maximum energy allowed? Okay, so E could be anything. I mean, the upper limit is not um, not bounded because even if you have very large energy you may fire it very close uh, I mean it you can fire it almost in the direction of origin if you do so then you can uh, make the angular momentum small okay so that way you can offset the largeness of the energy to make small L but the lower limit is of course um, it has a there is a lower limit on the energy and that is what we want to see how so the lower limit is this you have um, e the total energy e is equal to half mu r dot square not the vector plus u effective you remember u effective has two pieces one is the potential energy of this interaction plus the centrifugal term okay coming from the um, uh, motion in the theta direction let me just show you once more here okay this is the u u effective and also note that the this piece which is coming here is positive it's always positive okay but u of r this could be negative also because there may be attraction okay so there is a L dependence in here in U, U effective and let's say you have chosen some L. We want to know what is the minimum, uh, minimum total energy that is allowed for the system to have. Okay, And clearly the minimum energy this can have is the minimum of this provided I can put the R dot to be 0. Okay, So the E minimum, you get the E minimum to be equal to U effective minimum. Okay, So if your particle comes to uh, not rest, because rest would mean that particle is not moving, but R dot equal to 0 does not necessarily mean that the particle is coming to rest it just means that the particle has come to a turning point okay let me emphasize this so you see here if the particle is let's say com coming from this direction and going when it reaches here the r dot will be zero okay because it has to turn now but it does not mean that the particle is has come to really rest at rest because in the plane it is it will still have some uh, theta dot non-zero okay so these two are different things so anyhow, um, the minimum energy that the particle can acquire is equal to the minimum value of U effective. 
okay it it cannot go lower than that because going lower than that would mean that this piece has to become negative which is not possible because it's a it's a square of a real number which will be positive okay so that's the constraint we have okay now um with this understanding let's look at capital problem now which is basically taking a inverse square law force which uh, is applicable for gravitational force for example and that's what we will study now okay so let's write down u effective u effective would be um u of r so u of r is now minus k over r okay then you have the other term coming from centrifugal term to mu l square over r square okay i would encourage you to think why you have such a term okay i mean of course mathematically it's all good that it is there you but you should develop a, a feeling for this term that yes indeed you really see that it it should be there okay um for example you can imagine sitting on the the I mean, one way to think will be to sit on the radial vector and let's say you are the observer ob observer which is sitting on the radial vector which connects to the point uh, mu okay the the particle mu and you have been told that this particle mu is getting attracted towards the center via this thing but as the particle is moving around you will not see that this is really getting attracted by this force okay you may see it um, having additional force and that that will be due to the fact that this thing is really m moving in a circle uh, sorry um, moving in a plane so um imagine just imagine that this thing was moving in a circle okay and you were sitting on that radial vector then what you will see is that even though you have been told that there is a force which is attracting it that particle doesn't move anywhere it stays exactly at the fixed distance away from you so for you nothing is happening it's just staying there okay and uh the reason is that actually it is moving but it it's the motion is in the theta direction okay so from your point of view you will think that there is another force which is balance, balancing that um that attraction um towards the center okay and that there is another fictitious force and which is this one okay so anyhow that's our effective potential and to say anything about the motion we should draw a diagram like this for the kepler problem so the first thing you should ask is are there any maxima or minima so what is the structure of u effective so first thing is let's find are there any extremum points and if they are there whether there are there is a minimum or a maximum or if there are many maxima or many minima or both kinds are present that is what you should ask so you can check immediately uh the following that if you take the first derivative and equate to zero you get a non zero i mean you you do get a solution and this happens at r not equals l square over k mu so there is a potential candidate for an extremum 
uh, please check this then also let's calculate the second derivative to know the nature of it so if you calculate uh, this quantity at r equal to r naught you will find that this turns out to be Mm. I hope it's correct k to the 4 mu cube over L6 I, yeah it's correct I think L to the 6 which is greater than 0 okay your k is greater than 0 I should have written specified here k is greater than 0 anyway mu is greater than 0 l is l square so it's positive you have l cube so it will be positive so this is a positive quantity which means that at r naught you have a minimum okay the other solution which you'll find here corresponds to r equal to infinity and of course at r equal to infinity you don't have any extremum it's just uh, it's not a local extremum it's just falling off to 0 okay so yeah you have one and only one extremum and that is a minimum in this case so for l equal to zero there is see in, in this derivation i have choose uh, taken l to be non-zero so for l sorry for l not equal to zero there is only one local extremum which is a minimum okay very nice now you know that at a point r not um, which is this you'll have a minimum then you know that your u effective goes to zero asymptotically as r goes to infinity then we also know what do we know mm, yes that uh, as r goes towards zero your uh, potential will blow up and it will blow up in the positive direction because this will blow f blow faster than this one okay so uh, for very small r really towards zero you can forget this one and this one will be the one which will uh, control the behavior of u effective so this is the kind of um, graph you expect for u effective for the Kepler problem Okay, before that I should say something more I should also give you an exercise trivial that find out what is the value of u effective at r equal to r naught where the where, where the minimum is located so u effective at r0 is equal to minus half k square mu over l square which is negative okay so now i know quite a lot so let's say this is r naught let's say this is the value of u effective at this at this point which is negative so that's why i've chosen it uh, this point to be here and then it goes asymptotically to zero because at r goes to infinity this goes to zero so i should have something like this the slope should be zero here okay it should go to zero not looking very nice uh, let me do it again okay looks better oh. I 
anyhow and then it blows up okay so your y axis is u effective this is r and that's the effective potential that you have now our um task is to analyze the motion of the problem uh, motion of uh, this um particle mu in this potential okay that's what we will take up next <coughs> 